Hey everybody, what's up? It's Jeffrey Lyles. I'm back with a new installment of Figure Files. I missed a couple of weeks. Blame it on too much writing of other things. But there's so much, as usual, to talk about, including some big projects from Hasbro, which I'm sure you've already seen and are trying to figure out how much blood you can donate as a blood bank to afford it. We're going to talk about that in a second. First off, we are going to talk about a Hasbro project, the Transformers Generation Shattered Glass Jetfire. I'm really digging this whole concept of the Autobots being the villains and the Decepticons being the bad guys. So we're seeing a lot of Autobots like Goldbug and Prime and Ratchet, Blur in black, kind of purple uh, Decepticon color scheme. And we're seeing more of the Decepticon characters like Megatron and Starscream in a white and red color setup. Now, Starscream looks a lot like a Macross Robotech fighter, which I'm sure is kind of a coincidence, but it looks cool. The newest one that they released or showed today up for pre-order is Jetfire. This is an exclusive Hasbro Pulse variant version, and he is clocking in at $91.99. I've said this before, Hasbro has raised the prices on their figures across the board. Marvel Legends, Star Wars are now $22.99 instead of the old faithful $19.99. And we're starting to see that price up to go with larger scale figures too. I'm curious if this is going to be what takes some collectors out of impulse purchases or if they'll just go, screw McDonald's, I'll use this money for the new figure. Speaking of Marvel Legends, I uh, went to Target this week and I was able to get one of those magical, mysterious Shang-Chi figures on clearance price. And I've seen people say they've got them for $8.99, which is still a magical, you know, far off price for me. But I did get Wenwu for $13.99. Not a bad price at all. Today I went to a Target and they had Shang-Chi and Iron Man. And I went to the helpful associate to see what the price was, and it's still $19.99. So I can't win them all. But the big news on the Marvel Legends front, of course, is the HasLab Galactus. We pretty much assume this is going to be the case the second they tease the Fantastic Four in Galactus shot, or Fantastic Four in HasLab. And we were like, well, it's either Fantastic Car or Galactus. And the thought was, of course, Galactus makes more sense. Put him up to the Sentinel, and bam, we've got the two biggest characters that we should have in our collection. I did not get the HasLab Sentinel, just because I really would prefer to army build Sentinels, and I just could not justify paying so much to army build those guys. Plus, I have a pretty respectable Sentinel army. Uh, already from the Marvel Universe and the Toy Biz figures. I have three of the old school Sentinels from Toy Biz. Those figures still hold up really well. Then I've got three of the Marvel Universe Sentinels. So I've got some figures, some Sentinels that can create some problems for the X-Men. And while they're not towering over them, like the HasLab versions, which are, is incredible, I couldn't also spend $900, or I guess it was more than that, like over $1,000 to have three gigantic size Sentinels, let alone try to figure out where the heck I was going to store those guys. Galactus, of course, is a totally different thing, because if you should have one gigantic figure in your collection, it should be Galactus, and he is massive. He towers over even the Sentinel. Um, maybe towering is an exaggeration. He is taller by a noticeable amount over the Sentinel. And he can do the, the straight up hold of figure in his palm of his hand and it looks good. It doesn't look like, hey, look at my little friend, like a giant man thing. And I, I just, wow. It's an incredible looking figure. They've got three different face plates for it. They've got the angry, they've got the serene, and they've got the desiccated skull version where you just see his mouth and skeletal bones and all that good stuff. They've got a light up feature and Hasbro, the Hasbro team tease that we are going to get some, you know, additional 
backer incentives so we're going to get a six inch figure that was the first tease now everyone is trying to figure out which of the galactus's heralds makes the most sense i mean and i think anybody but but silver surfer is fair game at this point so hopefully we can probably get that fire lord I would be happy getting the new Terex because I didn't get the Build-A-Figure from when Hasbro started figuring out how to do Marvel Legends again. And I wouldn't mind a better version of him. I know people are going, well, that's a figure that could sell on retail on his own. I agree, but, you know, I'd just be happy to get him. So that's my pick on that one. He is over $400. But I think in this case, getting everything that they showed, the guy had 20 points of articulation in his hand alone, 75 points of articulation all told, and just his mammoth structure, I think he's going to be worth that price tag. Again, I think I had a spot in my collection for him, like in my display. I'm not sure after I saw the pictures because he is towering over that Marvel Universe Galactus, and I'm like, oh shoot. What am I going to do now? So I'll have at least a year to figure that out. So hopefully I can jury rig my display of Marvel Legend figures in a way where Galactus can take center stage in the cosmic area and it makes sense and looks good. So we'll see. Now the other HasLab project that we got spoiled slash revealed was the Star Wars Black Rancor figure. Uh, the Star Wars panel team did an interview and one of the leads kind of let it slip. Try to play it off, but I think we all were like, yeah, we know that's what's coming. So we got the Rancor coming. I have, again, switched up my action figure display to give more prominence to my Star Wars figures, the six inch ones. This wasn't a big priority when I was just getting the SH, SH figure arts figures along with a few Black Series figures that I had from way back when. Now that I've gone so far hardcore into getting those guys again, I think I've probably got about 50 over the last two years because they've done such an amazing job on these guys. But my collection of Black Series is pretty impressive now. I'm looking at the shelf like, yeah, there goes Rebels, there goes the Clone War shelf. I'm loving it. So the real question is, do I have space for Rancor? I really would love to, but getting Galactus and the Rancor at the same time seems a little sketchy and doubtful so we'll see fingers crossed maybe we can make that a reality soon so we'll see gi joe had a major week just all kinds of reveals on the gi joe front first up mattel revealed its mattel creations exclusive figure which is sergeant slaughter the ultimate edition figure so that's their super articulated line it's kind of like what AEW is already doing with their Unrivaled and Unmatched series. But now we've got that, the super articulation. It's a step up from the lead figures. And now they've included Butterfly Shoulders, which takes them up another notch, which is something that was definitely needed on wrestling figures. On the video playthrough of the Sergeant Slaughter, uh, Bill McKenna actually showed that Slaughter can do the, the atomic noogie from back when he was a heel back in 1990. Uh, when he was going back and becoming an Iraqi sympathizer. The less said about that, the better. This Sergeant Slaughter, however, is classic G.I. Joe attire. And it's got like, you know, it's, it's a G.I. Joe Sergeant Slaughter figure without the G.I. Joe logos and all the good stuff. Comes with a camouflage jacket, his riding crop, sunglasses, alternate heads. Really looks good. He's clocking in about $37 before shipping, so probably around $45, $50 by the time it's all done. Definitely getting it. I already had that first Legend Sergeant Slaughter with the one with the white tank top and the blue and red USA design. I'm feeling less likely like I need to eat that in the collection, though, so I'm trying to figure out if I want to try to do a quick sell. We'll see what happens on that front, but definitely excited about that one. Super 7 revealed its G.I. Joe line this week as well. They're going strictly Sunbow animated series versions, so their first line was Duke, naturally, and Snake Eyes with his purple coloring, because I don't know why they couldn't do him in black, but he was purple in the cartoon, and he comes with Timber, 
and he is basically a first series mass device version of snake eyes looks really good ditto for duke the other figures are cobra commander and they really try to do an all-encompassing version of him i mean my favorite accessory of the entire line is he has a synthoid controller and you know so he's got a thing remember he was like getting too fussy and like messing around with zartan like listen i'll take control of these guys and he burns all the all of the synthoids because he screws up good stuff you know lots of accessories because that's what super seven does and while i may not be as well versed on the transformers gadgets and easter eggs that they include i definitely was all in for what they threw in with these jajo figures um one thing with cobra commander brian flynn of super seven said that right now hoods are not allowed which is weird because cobra commander's other signature look of course is a blue hood but it sounds like for whatever reason, maybe there's some Hasbro suits who are a little worried about some racist connotations with Cobra Commander's blue hood. I don't get it. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, but it seems like for right now, hoods are not going to be included on any figures. Which I guess explains why it's been so hard to get more Star Wars, Black Series, the Imperial Snow Troopers. I hope that's just something. I mean, if anything, that figure's probably more likely to get uh, long shelved than anything else while we're really sensitive with things. But that's why no hood for the Cobra Commander. So disappointing. Hopefully that does get resolved at some point because that's not something that we should really be restricted on for an action figure. And don't let me get started on these uh mcfarland figures that can't have guns for the suicide squad and dc figures just seemingly not being able to have guns whatsoever because it's stupid suicide squad is rated r i don't know why people are having a fit about toys based off a rated r movie having guns so peacemaker has an axe and i'm getting into it even though i said i wasn't going to anyway it's silly it's goofy i really think we need to just leave the r-rated toys to having all the gadgets and gizmos that they should have not censor them for the kids who shouldn't watch the movie in the first place seeing them on the shelves anyhow the last super seven gi joe figure is a cobra bat the problem with this one is you know these figures clocking around 55 dollars how much army building can one really do if they're 55 dollars this price tag is a bit expensive but i can't imagine a scenario when they reveal flint and Lady J, and probably Shipwreck, and Snake Eyes version 2, where I'm going to be like, no, that's too much. They've got the Silverhawks line, they've got the Thunderhawks line, and they've got G.I. Joe, and they've got Transformers, and I'm starting to think that it's only a matter of time before I have a Super 7 display in my collection very soon. Last bit of news on the G.I. Joe front, we have some confirmation, there's no rumors anymore, even though people already had the figure, there's a deluxe G.I. Joe classified series Zartan figure, and this deluxe figure kind of feels like this is the one they should have released all along, like it was just held off on the first one, maybe put out another Cobra Trooper or something, and release this version of Zartan, because I think he's well worth the deluxe setup. So Zartan comes with his regular disguise that we got in the first figure the crossbones half skull like the dreadnoughts logo which is very cool then he's also got these soft masks one of which clearly resembles the soft master and i think the other one is supposed to be the hard master so for you comic book fans of gi joe this is a really cool added bonus then there's also two additional head sculpts of Storm Shadow with a classic ninja sculpt, you know, from his original version, and Snake Eyes. And this Snake Eyes head sculpt actually has the deluxe version Snake Eyes painted uh, head sculpt. So that means his visor is silver, which I never got. So I'll be very happy to get Zartan so I can double dip and swap the head on my classified series Snake Eyes. So it's like a two-in-one bonus for me. And... Zartan also comes with a sniper rifle, looks super huge, probably something that Hasbro will repurpose for a low light, assuming he's on the list of figures we're going to get soon, and he comes with a bow and arrow, you know, so, you know, he's all in with his killing snake eyes, oops, sorry, didn't realize it was a hard master, um, shout out to the comics, so it's very cool, anytime they want to do any deep dives into the comic book world, I would happily buy a classified series, Dr. Venom, soft master hard master etc so you know bring them on i'm all for it 
And so that's it from the G.I. Joe land. So I'm very happy. You know, it seemed like we weren't getting any kind of news from G.I. Joe for way too long. But it definitely seems like the tide has been turned. They're excited about the movie, The Snake Eyes, G.I. Joe Origins, which comes out next week, if you're listening to this Monday. And we're going to get that, you know, we're going to get those classified series from the, from the movie. I hope it does well simply for the fact that I don't want this movie being blamed for us not getting more classified series figures even though it seems kind of silly to blame that because these line this line is sold out pretty much everywhere even now I'm still going into Target don't see a lot of classified series figures if anything I may see a Zartan maybe a Cobra Commander but it's certainly not a case where this the shelves are Ghostbusters full of classified series figures so we'll see how that goes McFarlane Toys tees its Princess Bride line with an Inigo Montoya figure on his kneeling pose. I'm very curious to see what they do with this line, how far and how deep they go into it. This is something I think McFarlane Toys could do really well, assuming the likenesses are really good, because that is something that's not always their strong suit with movie and TV licenses. But if they could do that, For their $20 price tag, I will definitely strongly consider getting their figures. I've wanted a Princess Bride line for a long time, and I think they can get all the really important characters in 10 figures or less. And if that is the case, then it'll be well worth it to be able to go to the store instead of buying from a specialty retailer and get them, choose the best paint apps, and have my Princess Bride mini collection. Storm Collectibles revealed the final member of its Golden Axe trilogy characters with Gilius Thunderhead and Chicken Leg. I am amazed because I've been collecting Storm Collectible figures for a very long time that they were able to actually complete a set based off of a video game. I'm still patiently, not so patiently, waiting to get a Balrog, Blanka, Dalsum, DJ, Faithong. Cammy in her traditional outfit, Thunderbird, Cody, Guy, etc., a Street Fighter, and so many figures from Mortal Kombat, Liu Kang still, um, Johnny Cage, Sonya, I mean, Jax, that of course Tekken is just a whole mass amount of people who are not related to the Kazuya clan. I want King, Armor King, uh, Martial Law. Paul, I mean, so many characters. There's so many figures that it's like, how are you going to complete Golden Axe? I get it. It's a simple line. They can wrap it up. Good for Storm Collectibles because they finally get to knock out a line of characters. So good job. Now let's get back to Tekken, Mortal Kombat, and Street Fighter. So yeah, lots to be excited about. Next week is kind of sort of when we, we would normally be getting our San Diego Comic Con exclusive reveals. I'm very excited. I'm looking at the calendar, and it looks like we've got the Walmart Collector Con. We're going to start seeing what they're bringing to the table. They've shown a silhouette of a G.I. Joe figure. I am imagining and envisioning that this is a classified series stalker, and I will jump through whatever hoops Walmart wants me to jump through to get a classified series stalker because, you know, OG 13 guy here. Um, Then we got the Mattel panel this Friday and we're going to see what they're showing off from the WWE line of course I can't wait because I I look forward to what Mattel delivers with their WWE line action figure tax said we're going to get some new figures new first in line guys I am hoping we knock out some more NWA guys honestly I've been doing a lot of old school watching of 80s wrestling and if we can just get a Nikita Koloff Midnight Express Rock and Roll Express a better old school version of Barry Wyndham and Lex Luger. I'll shut up for a guarantee of six months. I'm not promising anything after that. As I do want a varsity club. I want the Steiner Brothers. And of course I want Doom. But these are the main classic guys that are kind of left from the 80s. And man I've been watching so much. And it's like dude I need a Nikita Koloff figure from Mattel in my life. Because gosh Nikita was a beast. I like Nikita. Watching his stuff back in the 80s, it's like Nikita was so good. And he, his absence in my line is so crucial. And I've almost got that War Games team completed. I mean, even got a Paul Ellering figure. Got a J.J. Dillon. I mean, I've got everybody except for Nikita Koloff. 
And I guess maybe, quote unquote, I could could borrow and beg for a war machine for war games too, but let's just focus on that. And then I get my Barry Wenham, you know, the black glove, non black glove, so we can have you know, Happy Go Lucky Face Barry and Horseman Heel 1988 version Barry. Uh, so yeah, I'm really, really hoping to see some cool stuff from Mattel. I'm excited about that, and that is where I am like most amped up to see what we get coming from them. And we're gonna get some more surprises. Jazzwares revealed its Wave Six, put them out with different or the AEW Unmatched. So we got to see the Kenny Omega. I feel like they keep knocking out better versions of Omega with each figure they put out Miro Miro's probably the guy I'm going to wait to see that next version because I didn't like the head sculpt and one great thing that Jazzwares has done they keep releasing new head sculpts and one thing Mattel will do is they'll just run one head sculpt for several versions of a character Jazzwares is mixing it up basically with each figure I love that because if one sucks like the Matt Jackson from series 3 where it's just like I get what you were doing but it didn't work I know that they'll release another one soon that'll have a better or at least different head sculpt. This first series one was great anyway, so honestly, if they just get the skin tone fixed, I just use that as my default Matt Jackson. So lots of stuff to be excited about. I cannot wait till next week's reveals. I will definitely have another Figure Files podcast to talk about all this stuff. I will probably try to wait until Saturday till most of the reveals have been shown to us and, uh, yeah, but I'm excited. But in the interim, definitely check out the site, lousemoviefiles.com. I will be doing daily updates as soon as stuff gets posted with the pre-order links as applicable. So get hyped, get excited, get ready for hopefully a very exciting San Diego Comic-Con at home reveals from all these companies. And let me know what you're interested in picking up. So thanks for listening. I'll catch you later. This episode of Lyle's Movie Files has been filed.